home. Security expert Michael Jagger shows you how to protect your investment from thieves. One of the things that happens in the security business is there's a lot of companies that sell security. Uh, so they'll come out and you sign a contract with uh, you know, the, the person who comes to your door or the person that is in front of you, but it turns out that customers find out later that the contract they sign is actually with a, a third party company that's purchased that contract. So the person who sold the security isn't really related directly to the person who's actually, or the company is going to provide the service. The key thing is just to be sure who you're actually uh, dealing with. What we tell clients is, is an alarm is not a security system. A security system is, is everything. It's, it's your locks, it's having proper glass, it's having just everything sort of set up correctly. The alarm is one component of it. And one of the, the risks, I think, is that people assume that, you know, putting in a, a real basic little alarm is going to somehow increase their level of security and it's going to help them out if they have a, have a break-in. And unfortunately, they don't learn until after a break-in that an alarm is just not a deterrent anymore. You know, having a, having a machine that makes a, a loud noise, the crooks don't, they don't care because they know that if, uh, unless an alarm is set up with immediate response, no one's coming. And so they can get their, their burglary done very quickly. Uh, well before anyone else is able to do anything about it. Ease of access is certainly one of the most effective things um, as, a, as, as a company that sells electronic security equipment. Um, we tell people up front that we're actually the last, we're the last place you should be spending your money. What you need to do first is work on your physical security. One of the most effective things you can do is secure your yard. Put locks on, on your back and, and side gates. Uh, having proper proper locks and make sure on your on your front and back doors and making sure that your, your door frames are secure so that it's not terribly simple for someone to uh, to kick the door in. Coming sure. Now security expert Michael Jagger explains why thieves are rarely deterred by alarms anymore and what you should really be thinking about to protect your home. In my view, you know, at the same time that we we advise clients that an alarm system is an alarm is not a deterrent. Uh, it's also very important to have a monitored uh, alarm. Having a local alarm is, is much like having a, you know, a siren on your car. Uh, it's just it's just not terribly uh, effective. It's certainly not a deterrent. Um, if you're going to have an alarm, it needs to be monitored. But it's only worth monitoring if it has immediate response. You know, having having an alarm monitoring where the police aren't going to come, or you know, it's going to take 30 minutes for someone to respond. Start having sort of questionable value with with that. So it's. It's having the alarm monitored with immediate response is where it all sort of makes sense. So you sort of take away one of those components, it, it really offers significantly less value. Yeah. You really need to push your security out as far as possible so that you're detecting people as early as possible. Basic things, just making it harder for people to get easily onto your property, so just lock it. Now, for those of you who have had your home broken into, it's a most invasive experience. Sometimes you need to think like a thief to protect yourself. A typical burglary takes, it doesn't take very long. 90% of burglary, residential burglaries happen the exact same way. Uh, a crook's going to come to the front door, knock on the door. If you answer the door, uh, locking your gates uh, is a big, it's a big thing. Another big uh, security thing that most people overlook is forgetting that most alarm systems rely on the phone lines to communicate. So you can spend all this money on the security, but if you don't address the fact that someone can go to your TELUS box outside of your house, which is incredibly accessible, and clip the wires right there, you've got no more, you don't have any more security. Anything you can do to make it, to make it uh, seem like uh, the house is lived in, the reality is that most, most burglars are going to come and knock on the door anyways to check. Um, and so if they don't get an answer, that's where they, they'll, they'll break in. Coming up next, what it really takes to become a realtor and in a few minutes, insight into the criminal mind and how burglars stake out your home. Uh, has something fairly suspicious to say, whether they're, they're looking for some uh, a bizarre address or looking for Joe or, or some, something that just doesn't make a lot of sense. Most break-ins happen through the front or back door uh, and they'll use a, a screwdriver uh, or a small crowbar, put it by the, at the lock, pry the door a little bit and just give it a good kick. And typically what happens is the door holds and the lock holds, but it's the door frame that's weak. It snaps, the door comes down, burglar uh, will come in. First place they go is the master bedroom. They pull out the bedside table drawers, dump them out, and they go into the closet. And they're looking for cash, jewelry. It used to be CDs were a big thing. Anything that can be quickly sold 
most burglars, most property crime uh, in Vancouver is is very much drug drug related. In that the people that are actually doing the crimes are motivated not by the thrill of 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 doing a burglary or of amassing a, a great collection of CDs or electronic equipment. It's to get their next hit of whatever whatever drugs they they need. So they're on a real short time frame. They're normally stealing in order to get the drugs they need in the next couple hours. So they're looking for things that can be immediately turned into cash. They'll spend as long as they need to. Um, there's two I guess two different ways of looking at it. the pre-alarm time, the amount of time they'll spend on your property, sort of working on trying to get in, and then the post-alarm time, the amount of time they'll spend after the alarm has has tripped. And in just a couple of minutes, we have.